Before I talk about allostasis, let's talk about homeostasis, which is a constant internal body environment involving the continual regulation of vital body functions such as your body temperature, oxygen levels, blood glucose levels, water and iron content. A key distinguishing feature of homeostasis as opposed to allostasis is it involves the regulation of the body by a single point, i.e. altering your blood oxygen levels, keeping them within those narrow limits. Homeostasis involves minor variations in order to keep your physiological functioning within narrow set limits. So for instance, our body temperature, if it increased by let's say 15%, we'd get organ meltdown. If your body temperature decreased by 15%, we'd have potentially fatal hypothermia. Allostasis achieves physiological or psychological stability through behavioural or physiological change, enabling the body to meet the internal and external demands placed on it. So the key point about allostasis is the brain tells the body to maintain physiological stability by adapting to the changes in the environment, that is, the stress source. So physiologically, we can adjust in a beneficial way, thus reducing the injury or harm from the internal or external forces. And this is achieved by a variety of allostatic systems, the autonomic nervous system, HPA axis, immune system, cardiovascular systems, etc. So allostasis is a more dynamic and adaptive process than homeostasis because it can initiate a multitude of physiological changes. So for instance, when we're dehydrated, sweat levels will be reduced. Kidneys will reduce urine output. The eyes and the nose will dry up. Thus, the body can cope with large changes in response to the changing environmental forces. So allostasis enables our body to function efficiently whether we're in a sleeping relaxed state or whether we're exercising for in a quiet or a noisy environment, hot environment or cold environment, whether we're hungry or full, isolated or in a crowded situation, whether we're safe or in danger, does this by increasing various physiological responses required for that internal or external event. So our heart rate will go up when we're exerting self, down when we're in a relaxed state. Blood pressure will increase, decrease depending on our activity, etc. So when we encounter a stressor, the allostatic response will be initiated via the HPA axis, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, adrenal cortex and sympathetic nervous system to help us deal with that stressor. And when we have successfully dealt with it, the brain will switch off the allostatic response to reduce the wear and tear on the body. Too much stress can lead to allostatic load, which refers to the cumulative cost of the body of allostasis, which can result in a breakdown of the regulatory systems when pushed beyond adaptation and diminishing the effectiveness of the allostatic response, which can trigger physiological disorders such as, let's say, a stomach ulcer, hypertension or other cardiovascular diseases or psychological disorders maybe a mood disorder like depression or an anxiety disorder. Importantly, it's the brain's appraisal of the stressor that plays a major role in developing our coping strategies, as influenced by the biopsychosocial model.